This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. Today we are switching gears and moving from R&D stuff into validation and lifetime testing for the index. Last time we redesigned the frame to do a really, really good job of tensioning very precisely, and now we need to actually quantify how good that is and how repeatable its placement is. So I've designed a test that does exactly that. The way that I've chosen to do this is using machine vision. There's a lot of ways to check repeatability and precision of some kind of moving gantry, but the index already has two camera systems integrated into it already, so I figured why not use that to check it. So what's actually in this test that's gonna check for this? The first thing to do is to run the machine through a lot of cycles, moving the full extent of all of its movement. Doing this over and over is going to check and make sure that there's no wear or belt slack or any other thing that happens gradually over time with the machine. So some part of the test has to be having the machine just kind of move for a really, really long time. And that's great and all, but it doesn't really tell us how precise it is as time goes on. We need to check maybe once every cycle that it goes through and moves to the extent of all of its axes, is it still repeatable? Is it still where we expect to be in space? And that's where the machine vision comes in. So after all the axes move around and it's kind of stretched its limbs and moved to all of its full extents, it moves the nozzle right over the upwards facing camera. Now on the tip of the nozzle, there is a very tiny little piece of blue painter's tape. The reason I chose blue painter's tape is because it's a very specific color, and then OpenCV takes that image and finds exactly where the centroid of that blob, of the blue blob, is in the image. By doing this over and over in between every cycle of moving the machine to its full extent of its range, we can see where is the nozzle exactly in space really, really easily without adding any extra hardware. Another approach I thought about doing was adding a dial indicator to both the X and Y axes and moving the head around and doing the same thing, and then moving them into the dial indicator and programmatically checking the values to see if it comes back to really, really close to the same precise position, same precise position, same precise, same precise position, wow. But because we already have the cameras built in with a full lighting pipeline and OpenCV is really fun, I figured this would be a good way to do it. Also, the camera's accuracy is more than enough for being able to decide if we're able to pick up 0603 components, especially because we're using this exact camera for placing 0603 components on boards anyway, so it kind of fits. So enough talking about it, let's take a peek at the script. Over here. All right, so here's the setup. I've got a Raspberry Pi here connected to the index over a USB cable, and it's just talking serial, sending bytes over serial as if it were OpenPMP or some other CNC controller. I also have an HDMI hooked up to the monitor so I can kind of see what's going on. And also through the same USB port, I'm also pulling from the upwards camera. So the Raspberry Pi can both control the machine and look at the upwards facing webcam, just like OpenPMP can. You can see here that the script that I wrote is taking an image of the little bit of blue painter's tape on the bottom of the nozzle, and then underneath you can see where it's masking out where it thinks the blue painter's tape is. It will then take this blob and pass it through an OpenCV function, which is finding the minimum bounding circle of a blob. So it will find what circle and what placement of a circle will fit directly around the blob as tight as it can possibly be. And then it overlays that onto the original image. And that's what it's doing right now. Great, so now that my script can find exactly where the nozzle is XY position coordinates wise, I then take the center point of that minimum bounding circle and I log it to a CSV file. And it just does this forever. Ideally, at the end of this test, we will have a really long CSV of a bunch of numbers that are all incredibly similar and super close to each other. And this data will show us over time, does it drift? Maybe there's a little bit of backlash that develops and our numbers will slowly drift in the X direction just a little bit, or maybe they drastically change at one point because there was a skipped step. Or maybe it just completely doesn't find it at all, in which case it logs negative one for both axes, or all kinds of different things. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do right now. And in a couple days, once it's done running a ton of cycles, we'll take a look at the data and see if anything happened. Here we go. All right, it's been a minute and we have some data to look at. The test has been running nonstop for about, let's see, 
There are 1800 rows in the CSV from every cycle that ran with a coordinate position of where the camera saw the blue dot to be in the frame. So I cleaned up the data a little bit and then I wrote a little script that graphs it out and this is what it looks like when you look at the position data over time. What the actual heck is going on? So first of all, a couple of things to pull away from this. First off is there is a really periodic cycling happening and I have no idea why. About every 28 minutes, there is a periodic peak cycling that happens with the position in both the X and the Y axes. Now this periodic cycling is happening with plus or minus 100 microns. If you look at the Y scale, the X position and the Y position, we're talking about like 24.8 millimeters versus 24.9 millimeters. This is a really, really small change that's happening, but it's very, very consistent and very obvious that there's some sinusoidal thing happening every 30 minutes that makes it vary just a little bit. Ultimately, this is pretty damn good of being able to be within plus or minus 100 microns. I'm pretty happy with that number, but it would be nice to get rid of this cycl cyclicality, cyclicality and try and make it so it's even more precise than that. I do, however, have a theory about what's going on. This is my air conditioner. It happens to turn on about every 15 minutes and turn off for about 15 minutes. It kind of sounds insane, but I kind of think that when the room gets a little colder or a little warmer, the coefficient of the thermal expansion in the plastic is coming into effect and the parts are either expanding or contracting just a tiny little bit, just enough to make a 100 micron change in either direction around nominal. I have before seen very, very slight changes in humidity or temperature affecting pretty high precision systems, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is doing it, but I'm also happy to be proven wrong. The way I'm gonna check to see if this happens is just run the test again without the air conditioner running and keeping it probably overnight so the temperature is hopefully pretty regular and not changing too much. And then also maybe recording the temperature along with the position data to see if they're connected. But ultimately, that doesn't even really matter that much. We have a plus or minus 100 micron tolerance on either side of nominal. The width of an 0603 component is 0.84 millimeters wide, and the opening on the smallest CP40 nozzle is about 0.4 five millimeters wide, we could be up to just under 200 microns out of spec on either side and still be okay and pick the part no problem. And the opening of the nozzle will still hit the top surface of the 0603 and pick it up okay. That being said, the more that we can keep it from being cyclical in this weird thing that's happening, the better. And the more factor of safety that we have for picking up these really tiny parts. I have a feeling that the thing that's actually causing this is the new tensioning thing that we introduced in the last video. It is the only part that's really truly involved in both axes' movement and would be affected in the exact same way by a temperature change, assuming that temperature is changing that part in some way. So in order to find out if that actually is the same part, maybe I'm gonna try like making it out of aluminum and seeing if we still see the same thing or taking that part and beefing it up like crazy and seeing if it still happens then. Either way, we're still with spec for picking 0603, but it really would be good to get that much better and get rid of that weird cyclical noise. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you have thoughts about how this test should be run differently, please leave them in the comments. I really wanna hear about how I can make this more accurate and more informative of a test. Also, please let me know other tests you think would be important to run for the index. I have a bunch in mind that I'm already working on writing, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on other things that that are really important to check and validate to make sure the machine is gonna work the way we want it to. The next episode will hopefully be an update on the shop. I've been working on getting it all renovated and painted and lighting installed and tables and tools and all that kind of stuff happening. So hopefully the next video you see will be about the new shop renovation. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. But before I go on to thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay has been making the boards for this project and they have come out absolutely beautiful. We are in the middle of ordering the next revision of the motherboard, which Gonzalo has been working on a ton lately and it looks super good. I'll be getting mine in from PCBWay pretty soon and that'll be a future video, spinning those up and taking a peek at how they look. We're getting them in the matte black with the gold finish and they're gonna look so good. Not only is the quality of the boards really nice, but they come in a really, really insane amount of time, like less than a week from the time you order them to the time that they're at your door if you go with the green two layer. And their pricing is incredibly reasonable. If you're looking for a board shop, I highly recommend PCBWay. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video.